Right, in this video we're going to have a look at one of the smaller record formats. It's the 8-ban record, so-called because it's 8 centimetres across, and it comes from the Japanese company Bandai, or at least it did. It was only on the market for around about a year, starting in 2004. The one I've got here is new old stock. I've got a record in the top of here, and then below there I've got the instruction booklet, which has a slip mat in it. It's a tiny little slip mat in there. And then below there, the record player itself. They only made this one type. It's this little plastic portable record player. There's a couple of different colours of this, but it's a very simple little machine. This It just runs on four AA batteries. You can't even power it from the mains. There are no outputs to send the audio off to anything else. It just uses its built-in speaker. You can see there, copyright 2004. Now, it did make its way to the West, courtesy of the White Stripes. In 2005, they sold 400 of these as merchandise at their shows, together with a selection of their previous singles issued on the tidy format. They did intend to sell more of these, but that's all they could get hold of, because the product had pretty much been discontinued by the time they started selling it. Now, those sets command quite a high price on eBay. Now, whether anyone ever gets these prices for them, I don't know. But when the White Stripes were selling, them they called them the triple incho phone now i paid nothing like those prices i think mine came to about 50 pounds including delivery to the uk which i don't think was bad although it is still just a small plastic toy record player so it's about the maximum that i'd want to pay for something like this taking the stylus cover off and turning it on i was happy to see that it does work it was advertised as junk as things often are on japanese auction sites we've got a small mono speaker at the top right there we've got a pitch control or a speed control below that i'm not quite sure why that's necessary and then up towards the top left you'll notice we've got an adapter to go into the center of discs that have a larger hole in them much like you get on a normal full-size record player although everything's been shrunk down so let's have a look at the record that we got with this one inside the box now i believe this worked just like buying a pack of trading cards in a comic shop you bought it and then you open it up to see what you got inside hoping it was the one that you hadn't already got i noticed there's a piece of black paper in here perhaps that was to stop you holding it up to the light to see what was inside or maybe it's just there for protection but anyway here's the one that i've got in mind and i'm not familiar with Japanese vintage TV from the 60s and 70s, but I believe that's what this range is, TV themes. Now, on this little disc here, you can hold a maximum of four minutes of mono sound. It's single-sided, and it runs at 33 and a third RPM. Also inside the box there's this piece of paper where you can tick off the titles as you get them along the bottom there. There's 13 listed on there, but I believe there's 16 in total in this range. There's three secret hidden ones that you can get if you're particularly lucky. And also we've got this nice double-sided artwork sheet here, which presumably tells you a little bit about the program that the music comes from. So let's put the slip mat on here and put the little disc on and let's just see exactly what this one sounds like. Oh dear, we've hit a bit of a snag. The tone arm seems to be weighing the record down and stopping it from turning. I think that slip mat is taking its job a bit too seriously. It seems like the slip mat is staying in position and the turntable beneath is spinning around. There's enough torque on there, so what I'm going to do, I'll just put that slip mat to one side for the moment and I'll put some gaffer tape on the turntable itself just to raise the record up a little bit and give it something to grip onto as well because this has a rough surface on there. So if we put the record directly on top of that, fingers crossed, hopefully this time we'll be able to have a quick listen to it. Well, it's the lowest of lo-fi, but at least it works. Let's just have a look at the size of this disc in comparison to a 45 RPM single. You can see it fits within the label in the center of it. If we compare it to a CD, well, it's the same size as one of those CD singles, but obviously it's smaller than a CD because a CD is 12 centimeters and this is eight. 
Anyway, let's put that slip mat back on top of that tape now because it seems to be gripping to that. And fortunately, I do have some other discs that I can play on this. And these are the real reason I'm featuring the 8-band in a video today, because before now I haven't found anything I wanted to play on one of these machines. But I've managed to get hold of a set of 13 of these. It's out of a collection of 16, and they're called Old is the Best. And looking at the front of there, there's some familiar faces and titles on there. So I'll be interested to see which ones I've got inside these packs. But before I do that, I just want to mention there is a web address listed on the back here. That website no longer exists. It was only online from 2004 to 2005. It would have been nice to see what other titles were available in the format. So I've looked on the Wayback Machine's cached version of their site. There isn't an awful lot there, but I can see there was some Japanese pop that was available on the format as well from the 1980s. And at the top of the page there, 367 yen is the price of each one of these packs that works out now to about the equivalent of just over two uk pounds anyway enough about what i haven't got let's see what i have got in these 13 individual packets now the description on the japanese auction site was very vague so i wasn't sure whether i was going to get 13 identical records or a random selection or 13 different ones so opening up the second one will tell me which way we're going to go well it looks like we're getting different ones so hopefully they're all going to be different and as I opened them up, I found that to be the case. Every single one I opened up was a different record. So it looks like this is going to be part of a full set that would have been in a shop, perhaps on a counter. Each one of them would contain a different record. And as you bought them, you'd work your way through that set and then the guy would have to restock, presumably. I've only got 13 out of the 16 here, but that's a, a nice selection of records. Let's have a look at one in a bit more detail. So I presume that the pictures on the front of these are a reproduction of the original cover art that would have appeared on the singles when they were first in the shops. Now, if we look at the back of here, we can see we've got the lyrics printed on there, which is a nice touch. And then at the bottom, we've got a copyright date of 2004, which ties in with all the other dates that we know for this format. And then we've also got a card in this one, which will presumably tell us a bit about the record at the top or the artist. And then below there, we've got 14 titles we can tick off in this range. And there are two additional titles that aren't listed on there. I think I might have one of those in my set because it doesn't appear on the front of the box. I can't remember which one it was now. But anyway, um, we've also got the record. Let's have a look at that. Nice thick vinyl this. It might be 180 gram vinyl, not too sure. A good little reproduction of the label there as well from Atlantic. And notice it says on the right there, stereo. But of course, this is only a mono player with a single speaker on it and no other way of getting sound out of it. But yeah, nice little thing that. Let's uh, put it on the record player and have a listen to it. We'll need to use that center adapter for the larger hole on these because they've really gone all out and made them look like a, an American style record. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so the glue on the label's coming off a bit, but other than that, it's fine. It didn't sound bad at all. A lot better than that Japanese theme tune. Let's have a listen to some others. Watching the ships rolling While recording that section, there's a few tracks in there that I hadn't heard before or I didn't know the artist names of, so now I can go back and listen to them properly. So it's introduced me to some new music, which is always a, a nice thing. I think this is a fun little product and it's a shame it didn't take off. Now I'm quite sure that despite their size, these little records could sound better if played back on something a little bit more upmarket than this record player. And it doesn't have any kind of outputs on it, so I can't send the sound off to anything. So it would be an idea to try and play them in a normal record player, but there's a couple of issues. First off, the centre hole is too large for a standard spindle, and the smaller spindle is too small, so you could perhaps adapt it. I'm just going to use a bit of plasticine on here just to demonstrate what that would look like. But then we've got another issue. The arm doesn't go as far as the record 
itself you see it stops at the back there because it's not designed to go into that section of a normal record because remember the size of one of these discs is the same size as the label in the center of a record where the arm doesn't normally travel into however i did remember i've got hold of one of these crosley revolutions recently not because it's good but because i was planning on using it in a future video for something and i was reminded that the arm on that goes right into the middle because it's designed for packing away and because it's a completely manual turntable it means there's no kind of automatic shut off when the arm reaches the center or anything like that so it might just work i'll put the line out into my speakers and on this one i'll need to adjust the center again so that the record stays on there and doesn't move to the side i'll put the slip mat on and i look through the toolkit seeing if i could find anything that was the suitable size to go over the center of there and hold the record in place i haven't found anything perfect just yet so temporarily i'm just putting a bit of tape on here but it isn't an ideal solution and it might rub against the record a little bit but at least I'll better just try this out. So let's give it a go and see what happens. I left my home in Georgia. Okay, so the sound is a bit wobbly, and there's a couple of reasons behind that. It's probably rubbing on that centre spindle, the record's a bit off-centre, the tone arm's on a record at a point it shouldn't really be on it, the angle's all wrong. But other than that, there is something I need to point out, a couple of firsts here. Number one, these records are in stereo. The label was right, everything I've read says that these are mono records, but no, definitely stereo. And the second thing is, this will be the only time you've ever seen anyone play a record in a Crosley turntable to make it sound better. So to sum up, the Bandai 8 Band was a cheap little toy plastic turntable that came and went with barely a whisper 13 years ago. It was definitely not the best way to listen to music, but that's what makes it interesting. It was just a toy, it was a bit of fun. You do remember fun, don't you? It was fun fun, wasn't it? But nowadays it seems like every product has to fit a need, perform a serious function and do it better than whatever came before, as well as maximise return on investment. The days for things as frivolous as the 8 Band record seem to be behind us now, and to me that's a bit of a shame. Although I suspect... That's a little consolation to Bandai, who probably lost a considerable sum of money on this little bit of frivolity. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.